What? Mute your mic. <laughs> Aloha. Natasha Delay from Kauai Tibetan Buddhist Dharma Center here on the island of Kauai. I'm Lama Natasha. We present this class every Thursday night from 6 to 8 Hawaiian time and recorded on our website for our Vajra brothers and sisters in other time zones. When presenting the Tibetan Buddhist Dharma, we present it under the healing energy of our own mind. And so the possibilities of healing for us individually and collectively are infinite. And so tonight we're going to use the symbol of that infinite application that treats not only the, the appearance of disease, but also the cause. And I'll explain that later when we start to do the practice of the medicine Buddha. And here we have the symbol in our tanka, which hangs over the shrine, but tonight we're bringing it up close. And this is the medicine Buddha mantra called a Dharani. Now, it's written from the top down. And that also hangs on our shrine. In the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, the application of the 84,000 Dharma teachings that the Buddha presented in India 2,600 years ago have pervaded most of the cultures of the planet through the Sanskrit alphabet and language. And in that way, able to pervade all of the cultures of the planet. When we have our what we have is our situation here in Hawaii is we have been bringing the teachers here for about 40 years. And in doing that, we have accomplished stupas on all the islands, which are used for healing and meditation and other practices. We have Dharma centers uh, on the major four islands. And we have lamas, monks, nuns, and teachers available on each island. The purpose of the mind training of these Dharma teachings is to move from the emotional preoccupation with the idea of a self existing or a soul migrating endlessly through the various realms from heaven to hell and in between is not satisfactory. And the result is pain and suffering. And that's obvious here on, on our small planet in the world in its condition today. And so to, create, to treat the causes and remove some of the conflict and deal with the pain and suffering in a way that alleviates it, then we present and practice Dharma every day. And as I told one of my students today, he says, well, wh what happens? And I says, well, it's very simple. The more you practice the teachings, the Dharma practices with the guidance of a, a Lama or many Lamas, the, the conflict and the obstacles individually and collectively dissipate and become less and less. And there is a point in the development of the individual 
using these methods, where actually the mind disappears altogether. And in its place it is an evolving state of higher intelligence, which wasn't available before. And that's, we call actually two words, Bu Da. Bu means appearances as they are, and Da means their vibration, their effect. And how to individually and collectively reach that point of development. Actually, it's, it's beyond growth and development. It's actually what the human race has come to is evolving, evolution. And we start by using a very unique idea in doing these practices. That everything we do with our body, speech, and mind is for everybody else. Because that's your life support. Everything you have comes from everybody else. So all the animals, all the humans, all the spirits in the entire universe are the reason for your practice. And since there's no such thing as separation, that infinite application takes you into these higher states of intelligence and less and less drama and less and less conflict and less and less neediness, selfishness. So we say in order to attain enlightenment for ourselves and limitless sentient beings, our mothers, we now all together take refuge and offer prostrations and ever other very powerful practices. Then we take refuge in our own innate nature, which is the accomplishment of your life situation becoming in harmony with the universe, the world around you, and the beings in it. So we take refuge in the three jewels, the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha. But at the same time, we take refuge in the practices of the deities in the Sutra and Tantra tradition of Mahayana <clears throat> Buddhism as was taught by the Buddhas and all the Lamas and all the teachers of our lineage down to the present day. So we say, we go for refuge to all these glorious Lamas. We go for refuge to all the idams, which are the deities gathered in the mandala practices that the Lamas teach. We go for refuge to all the Buddhas that have accomplished these practices and be gone beyond. We go for refuge to all this noble, noble supreme Sangha, which is all the teachers and all our Vajra brothers and sisters, householders, monks, nuns, yogis, yoginis, And then we go for refuge to all the Dakas and the Dakinis, who are the male and female protectors of the Dharma. All of these six refuges 
the three jewels and the three roots are the mind of transcending awareness and higher intelligence. And they're available to each and every being. But in the human condition, you can reach them in one lifetime. You can accomplish this liberation of your own situation from pain and suffering very fast. Then we have six basic Bodhisattva training. Generosity, morality, patience, perseverance, meditative concentration using the imagination and the development of insight into our true nature and how to use it. So we say in the Buddha, Dharma, and this Supreme Assembly, we go for refuge until enlightenment. May I, through merit, gain from practicing these six Bodhisattva disciplines, accomplish Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings, my children, or you can say my mothers. And I'm going to chant each of these three, the altruistic motivation, the refuge and the bodhicitta prayer in Sanskrit. Dadan yoa nante tadan yante samjam tamche du di ne jute chisi jangju ningpo vachi pi bardi. In the refuge, Pao Kandro Chokyo Sume Sho Yishe Ki Shendang Genpa Nam La Chaksu Chiyo. In the Bodhicitta prayer of the Six Perfections, Sanje Chodang Chokyo Chodang 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 the altruistic motivation to bring every sentient being to recognize their true nature is unique in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. Having six refuges is also unique in this tradition. And having bodhisattva training using the six perfections is unheard of, except in this tradition. So when you put this all together, with honor and respect for yourself for doing it, then for the teachers, then for the practices that you are receiving and performing. You learn to fly towards the realization of your true nature. And that's really fun. You know, you think med meditation is all about symbols and deities like the medicine Buddha and the mantras and the seeds of them. Well, of course, that's a major part of it. But actually, I was taught that the most important thing to, to meditate on constantly was that I have a precious human existence with the eight freedoms 
to become a Buddha already in place. And I'm free of the seven obstacles that would prevent that. And we meditate on that and contemplate it endlessly. The second thought is you're imper we're impermanent. Your next life, your next breath, you don't know which comes first, so you got to practice now. And since you have those eight benefits, it works with practice. Then we all have karma. Now, people don't believe in karma. And when I say people, I'm talking about humans. Seven billion humans, eight billion humans. They don't believe what they say, think, and do as a result. They don't know that everything they say, think, and do was set up in their previous lives with how they were acted and existed. And those tendencies follow you like a shadow from one form of rebirth to the next. And that's karma. That's what karma is. You know, here in Hawaii, we say what goes around comes around. Well, that's a very simple explanation, but that doesn't let you know that these inbred tendencies are your own, whether they be kind and considerate or harmful. You own them. And through Dharma practice, you delete the negative ones and develop the positive ones, and then everything becomes better. And finally, we're all in this together. This is called conditioned existence. And from being before the womb, in the womb, and when we come out into the world, this conditioned existence is unfavorable. Why? Because first of all, everything is constantly changing. Your mind, your situation goes from good to bad, back again, night and day, this life, and so forth. But, but these changes are taking place in your physical, mental, and emotional makeup. And because of those, So spiritual practice is the antidote to karma, to conditioned existence, which is unfavorable, and to developing a kind, considerate heart, way of being towards everything and everybody around you, your environment, all animals, spirits, and humans, and yourself. So those four thoughts are very, very powerful to contemplate, to meditate on. And when we do the 40 month retreat, you actually do 10 hours a day, two, four, two and a half hour sessions on each of those four thoughts for 28 days. That's what my teacher, Kala Rinpoche, thought was appropriate to start the retreat. And you know what? After that, I considered everything that we did for the next 40 months a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so to start the practice tonight of healing, both on the symptomatic level, which would all the healing on the planet of every culture, of every kind is only symptomatic. It only treats the symptom and it only brings temporary, if it, at all, it only brings temporary results. 
It doesn't treat the cause of the disease, which is your emotions, your judgments, these negative tendencies that are kind of subliminal, they're there. And they're weird, they come up at the most inopportune time. So we start with the Medicine Buddha practice with the sound of whom, which I put in front of the stupa, which is a symbol of the healing energy and infinite application. This whom is, is the vibration of infinite healing, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. We say it three times. Oh, oh, oh. Those three are for your body, speech, and mind, which is what you do to practice. Then you say it four times to bring these all together so that they're all in harmony, sync in your practice. Oh, oh. And then you get the result of being in harmony with the universe as the Dharmakaya, the Sambhogakaya, and the Nirmanakaya of the teacher. Three times. Oh, oh, oh. Now you can do this with any creation sound. Yeah. Can you say what the other three causes, primary causes of illness or imbalance is besides the five negative emotions? Abby wants to know what the eight applications of the medicine Buddha are. And we have the Dharma wheel. Now this Dharma wheel is explained many ways. Most of the other tr traditions we treat these eight spokes as right livelihood, life practice, and so forth. But in the Medicine Buddha, these are the, the lotus of taking birth in the human condition that the medicine sits on, on a lion throne with the four pronged Vajra And him, the medicine Buddha, blue in color, dressed in the robes of a, a teacher with the medicine bowl in his lap of pure awareness and the Myra Balam fruit, which treats the physical problems as medicinally. But what are these eight, eight applications? Well, the first one is attachment which is a real problem. Oh. <laughs> attachment is desire. Desire, once you have attachments to something, it starts to grow, you know, like a cold beer after a hard day's work. But it turns into desire on its own. That's how weird attachment is. Then desire, turns into lust, which means you, you start to develop a need where you never get enough and pretty soon you got a keg you got to use. <laughs> so desire is the worst affliction on the planet because it's end product is greed. Never enough. And that it's not favorable because if you die with that kind of neediness, there's a realm called the Pratas, hungry ghosts, deprived spirits. Isn't that, that's not fun. The second one is aversion, simple aversion. I don't like that. 
No more inches. I know, like that. But aversion is the same way. This, this is a, this is an immense energy. It turns into anger when you don't get what you. If you get too much, what you have aversion to. Then hatred. Look at what's happening with Putin, the head of Russia. And rage, totally psychotic. Then the third one is ignorance, not knowing how to deal with this personally and collectively. Then from those three, then we have from attachment, then we develop jealousy, envy. And then from anger and hatred, we develop pride, arrogance. We think we can just be, do that anytime we do. But the ignorance is not knowing that those are deadly causes of disease. Physically, mentally, emotionally, and most of all, spiritually. That ignorance becomes delusion, which is what all the religions of the planet suffer from. And all our social programs, political, military, corporate, family, delusion. Okay, so that's the first five. Attachment, aversion, pride, jealousy, and delusion. Then we have the outer program of witchcraft, sorcery. Is that in the same category as spirits? Which invoke these and create these nasty programs with spirits and sometimes animals. The spirits a separate category than sorcery? Well, the, the spirits are the category, but the sorcery is part of it. The curses, the hexes, and all that that are involved with this are the problem of suffering, not only for the people doing that, but also for who it's aimed at. So the category is spirits and curses? Spirits, spirits that are spirits conjured are by humans, yes. Okay. okay. Then the second category is religion with the wrong attitude. Now, all the religions of the planet, including Buddhism, are practiced with the wrong attitude. All of them. Because it's all about I, me, mine. It's all about believing you have a soul, you can get to a heavenly birth the next life. It's all about the future. Everything's going to happen tomorrow or next year or whatever. And practicing religion with wrong view like that causes so much separation in our society. And, and, and it's all the traditions, even certain forms of Buddhism. Look at Sri Lanka, look at Burma. So that's the sixth and seventh spoke. Now we come to the eighth spoke. Now this one is all the spirits, all the animals and all the humans can cause you immense problems, death, disease. We call it the eight worldly dharmas. What do you call that category? Sentient beings as being. Harmful sentient beings? The, the category of sentient beings causing you ill health. Your own family, your own lovers, your own sometimes spiritual teachers, political, on all levels. 
One day friend, next day enemy. And they have eight categories of them. And we're all up to our eyeballs in those eight categories. Praise and blame, disgrace and fame, pleasure and pain, loss and gain. That's everybody. You know, you pick up a cell phone, you watch the TV, you read a newspaper. That's the drama. Praise and blame, disgrace and pain, pleasure and pain, loss and gain. Blah, 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 blah. And if that isn't enough, those eight causes that we all have to deal with. The primary causes. The eight primary causes. Each of those have 24,000 indirect causes. So that's eight times 24,000. <laughs> are you talking about the secondary causes? The secondary causes are, are almost infinite. And all of the, you know, Tai Chi Quan, the, the Tara and the Chinese tradition, she tried to deal with this 5,000 years ago. And she came up with the elemental healing programs and movements and stuff with the body to bring some, some form of peace and calm abiding into the situation, meditation. And that evolved down to the present day with the Tibetan tradition because of the association with China had it with the, what we call the old tradition of Tibetan Buddhism, shamanistic teachers. So then the Buddha took birth again in the sixth century as Padmasambhava went to Tibet and he with his consort Yeshe Soryo and the king at that time, Chaisan Jetchen, changed the attitude of the Tibetan to culture away from killing animals and humans and children for perpetuating these spirits just so they could get the rain for their barley crop to survive the winter. They, now they don't have to do that anymore. Why is it not appropriate? Because it's very bad karma. You know, the, the word karma means result. You know, what goes around comes around. But the mind of loving kindness produces very powerfully good karma. The, line, the mind of hatred, anger, and neediness, just the opposite results coming. So that's what this, and the medicine Buddha is sitting on an eight petal lotus, which is these eight spokes. And on each of those lotuses, five of them, there's five Buddhas. Those five Buddhas are the five elements of Dakinis and the five Dhyana Buddhas that we use in all our practices. And then the other three with the guidance of the teacher, we deal with these outer war, famine, disease, poverty, environmental destruction, the spread of toxins. And Slave they, trading, drug trading, arms trading. And they are? Huh? The last three are the last three Buddhas on the lotus. And to deal with those, we have the last three spokes, which is the first of all, Chen Rei Zi, thousand arm Chen Rei Zi. The second one is Rathful Manjushri. And the third one is the wrathful Vajrapani. Now, when I say wrathful, I mean 
like the mother for the children that are unruly. Mm -hmm. She just says, that, oh, you can, don't do that. Uh-uh. You have to bring in strong discipline. Shall we do that? Night and day. Why? Because it never shuts off. What doesn't shut off? The chatter of your own thoughts, your mind. It's like your cell phone. It never, it's like the computer. It never, it never shuts off. You got to hit the switch. <laughs> you got to hit the delete button. You got to go click. You have to do that in practice. And then after a while, it just becomes okay. Very simple. <clears throat> Infinite okayness. And that comes from here, not from here. Anything else? <laughs> this is very powerful. This is how Lama Rinchen, my teacher, taught. This is how Kala Rinpoche, my root mom, on Maui. This is how he treated us hippies in the 70s, 60s. Heavy discipline. Now I'm going to read the Medicine Buddha Dharani, which is a very powerful expression you use with your speech. And imagine the Medicine Buddha in your heart center. And the seed syllable whom in the heart center of that Buddha in your heart center. Om Namo Bhagavati Vaisaja Guru Vaidurya Prabha Raza Zayan Tadyatva Arhate Sumaya Sambudaya Tadyatha Om Vikanzi Vikanzi Maha Vikanzi Rasta Samangati Soha. Three times we chanted. Oh, Namo Bhagavati Vaisaja Guru Vaidurya Prabha Razadaya Tathagata Arvati Samyak Samudaya Tadyata Om Vikanzi Vikanzi Maha Vikanzi Rasa Samakati Soha. Om Namo Bhagavati Vaisaja Guru Vaidurya Baba Razadaya Tata Katana Ramate Samaya Sambudaya Tayata Om Vikanji Vikanji Maha Vikanji Raza Samangati Soha. And a simple refuge of that is we take refuge in the world honored one, the Buddha is our own true nature, the king of lapis lazuli light. Blue medicine Buddha, the pure blue radiance of our own mind, like the sky. Gone to suchness, everything just as it is, worthy of offerings, destroyer of demonic situation, one of absolute universal enlightened awareness, all wisdom energy in our body, speech, and mind. Purifying our mind, the medicine even cures all aspects of negative conflict. Great medicine king, please cross this ocean of suffering and permeate the situation of every animal, human, and spirit in the, in the universe. Now, this is the Tibetan alphabet which all the Sanskrit language, all the mantra, all the teachings are these 32 letters. Om, ah, ah, e, e, u, u, ri, ri, li, li, a, a, o, o, ah, ah, kaka, 
Om ye dharma he chu bhava he chu te tente tata gata yo haya vandata tekan sayo nira da ewam wandi mahan shamana so ha. And that's the rasa discipline mantra of the medicine guru. All of these come to you to deal with these eight. aspects that require causal healing through the body, speech, and mind of the Lama, whether it be a monk or a nun, a householder, or a yogi and yogini. The first of these is that the mind of the Lama is the seed cell of home, which is infinite healing for any situation the transformer enters medicinal cure. Simple. I'll give you an example. Hatred. What's the antidote? Loving kindness. Just like your mother was for you as an only child. Unconditional loving kindness. Unconditional concern for your well being. That's the home. Then you express that in your practice with the sound of your speech, using mantra and other very powerful energy sounds, vibrations. Everything vibrates. Everything. The energy of the universe is simply a vibration of light throughout space. So the key is space. That's too simple. In space, there's infinite possibilities and infinite potential. There's an infinite universe. There's infinite sentient being. There's infinite Dharma. There's infinite applications and situations for healing. So we got a big program. That's the awe, the vibration. And Om, even the Hindus use Om, and a few other traditions. But Om is infinite, the vibration of the universe coming into you to support your life with your breath. Om, ah, Om. And if you have a teacher, a Lama, you know that from the Lama's three places, those three lights are shining into you all the time. Oh, yeah, that's our function. For what purpose? To bring your body, speech, and mind of your situation into balance. and treat this infinite pain and suffering that's going on around you, and maybe even in you. Then the Lama does one more thing. He hits you with these three places, home in your head, eye in your throat, and home in your heart center. When these three lights start to vibrate in your three places, then the Lama merges into you. And everything that that teacher is, is available to you. Like pouring water into water is way too simple. Oh, ah, oh, 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 oh. Um. 
Then the ohm in your head comes down to the ah vibrating in your throat. These two in union come down into the room, the infinite application of, of the mind of the teacher as the infinite dharma and the infinite applications that need to be transformed, healed. When the home has these, this code together in your heart center, that Buddha in the heart center of infinite love and compassion becomes you. You become the medicine Buddha in 3D. The rainbow body of bliss, of infinite healing, treating all the causes and the conditions that produce pain and suffering. Where? In you. So once you become the blue Buddha, like the color of the sky, whatever color blue you like, wearing the robes of the monk or teacher, golden robe, sitting on an eight petal lotus, on a sun and moon disk, on a lion throne, in the sky of your mind. That's all you. The infinite light appears from the empty mirror of your mind, which reflects everything that your body is sensing back. It becomes what we call mirror-like wisdom. And you more and more start to accept the fact that your mind is simply a, a mirror. Then the home, which you sounded 10 times, collects all of the energy of all the people doing this practice. From the time of Shakyamuni Buddha 2,600 years ago down to the present day, all the lineages, all these teachers, men and women, all the medicine Buddha Sangha people are your supporter. And what happens with that infinite amount of wisdom energy for your body, speech, and mind is you can pervade heaven, which is all the arrogant gods and goddesses of all the religion. You can pervade the war and war god, demigods, nagas. You can pervade the human condition of needy human. You can influence the ignorant realms of the animal and help them. And finally, you can pervade the worst preta realms of deprived spirits. They, they never get enough. They don't, one drop or an ocean extreme suffering. And finally, the anger and hatred of the demonic uh, hell realm. Many categories. Cannibal spirits. And what are you doing with all of this weirdness? is removing their negative tendency by simply being interested in their well-being with your body, speech, and mind and seeing them as enlightened, full of loving kindness and compassion. Entertaining bliss through their meditation, peace and tranquility, and completely deleting the negative causes that threw them into these situations with the mantra Tajata Om Bhi 
Kanji, B Kanji, Mama B Kanji, Raja Samangate Soham. When you see that mantra, the symbol surrounding the blue moon in your heart center, you're the medicine Buddha, just like it shows you. This Dharani is filling all the molecules and atoms of vibration in the entire universe. There isn't any situation that can't be purified. <laughs> Tadyata, collect all the wisdom energy of all the teachers, all the lineages, your support, own the energy of the universe into your Vikanzi Vikanzi purify the mind and the and the voice and, bo uh, and the body itself. Maha Vikanzi means beyond the mind. Become the medicine Buddha of higher intelligence 24 7 with no end in sight. Take time out of the movie. Remove the biggest problem of temporal existence, time itself. Rasda Samugate so Samugate means intelligence, highest intelligence. Nothing, nothing better than that. No goals, no limits. Equally applied to limitless sentient beings. Where? Here. Ma, 
Now, being the Dharma king, a Buddha, you don't project the image of the Buddha like you do the Bodhisattvas of Shenrezi, Manjushri, Rajapani, and Tara. You don't project those into the realm. The purification takes place on its own. The five Buddha families are each and every symbol of the Buddha. And the Buddha is, energy is the five elements as the five female aspects of creation, earth, water, fire, air, and space, which are infinite, universal. Your mother made your body out of them. The universe makes everything out of them. So when you become the medicine Buddha, it's all pervasive. That's the nature of your mind. You can think of anything, and you do. You think of some of the weirdest stuff. Think, 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 think. Now you're thinking medicine Buddha. Now you're thinking the mantra moving around the pool in your heart center. Now you're thinking that from heaven to hell and in between all these animals, humans, and spirit world are relieved of their pain and suffering. Infinitely okay. And if you get that, there's a very simple practice called Tong Len. It's based on the voidness of the realities. 
of your mind and the universe is actually existing. The energy of space and light. So whatever negative situation is pervading your situation, either in your mind or in the neighborhood and the world around you, that's the reason for purification. That's the reason for the practice. And so one of the simplest practices of Tong Wen is whatever negative existence energy is going on, either of your own creation or animals, humans, and spirits around you, or the universe itself, like we have this climate crisis, whatever is arising, whether it comes off your cell phone, your newspaper, your TV, or just being in a crowd. Take any darkness with your inhale into your heart center of loving kindness and think that it disappears instantly. And instantly the result is from your practice Loving kindness, compassion, concern for the well being, physically, mentally, emotionally, everything infinitely okay, this white light with your exhale. Inhale, disappear, whatever it is, darkness of any kind. The home is always there. But you don't have to visualize it. Exhale white light with your breath. No matter what situation was going on, it's okay now. Don't judge it. Infinite okay means lack of judgment. When the judgmental mind disappears, you're a Buddha. That's way too simple. Inhale darkness of any kind, war, famine, disease, poverty, environmental destruction, any kind, disappeared into your heart center. Exhale white light back. Perfect everything, natural. Beautiful. Okay. Instantly. You have loved one. One of my good friends just had a hip replacement. One of our strongest Dharma supporters, he brought the stupa here, he developed it, he brought the Lama. Now he has to have a hip replacement. Inhale anything that might hinder the healing of that black light into your heart center. Exhale white light, healed, perfect hip for Andy Pitt. You can do that with every relative, every lover, every pet. Cheryl's friend, Ernie. Hmm? Cheryl's friend, Ernie. Yeah. Who has stomach cancer. What is that? Cheryl's friend, Ernie. Oh yeah, Cheryl's friend. Ernie. 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 Infinite healing. Inhale the black energy. Disappeared, white light back. All of us are doing that for Ernie. No judgment. That's the end product of all of what we do. 
They say eighth level of bodhisattva practice. All the practices are as simple as that. You're in traffic, do taking and sending. You're in your garden, do taking and sending. You're making love, do taking and sending. You're at work, do taking and sending. You're in the ocean, diving. Whatever situation you can do this. There's always darkness to bring into the light. That's the Dharma. Wisdom mother, Dar, wisdom, ma, mother. La, ma, honorable mother. And when you do that, the Dakinis, infinite in number, the female energies of the universe take over. Why? Because you're practicing. You can trust to that. And they fill the sky. Just like the energy of the medicine Buddha, every realm, the medicine Buddha pervades with what? Loving kindness and concern. Remover of obstacles, remover of poisons, toxins. Then you have the deities, Shenrezi, Tara, Manjusri, Vajapani, thousands of these different symbols that work, but you have to do them. One connects to all the other. That's the way it works. There's no separation. 1,000 deities, you do Chen Rei Z, you got all 1,000. You do Tara practice, you got 1,000 Tara. Immediately five energy fields appear. They call them Buddha fields. Then, at the end of your practice session, think that all the sentient beings, your family, your lovers, your children, your mothers, however you want to think of them, come into you. As Sanjay Menma, the Blue Buddha of Infinite Healing. Then you disappear that rainbow body symbol of okayness into the mantra. Tajata om vikanzi vikanzi ma om vikanzi rasa samagati soha. All those vibrations starting with the Tajata om one by one disappear into the home in your heart center. Then the hung in a sphere of five colored light shrinks to a tiny particle and joins with the infinite light of space. And space is the ultimate healer, the mother element. When your mind and space unite, relax, be present. No past, no future. Don't block your thoughts. Don't think of it as nothing because they're everything. Allow your body sensations to come out. Don't judge them. Allow your thoughts to present themselves and disappear. Relax, it's your mandala.
<clears throat> at the end of this accumulation of wisdom, which accompanies the creation stage of being the deity, medicine Buddha and the mantra in the sea cell of home, creating the mandala. Between sessions, you can be the Buddha, you can be Chen Wenzi, Tara or whatever wisdom symbol your teacher is giving you for practice. <clears throat> but today, one of my larger brothers asked me if there was other way breathing technique for having more energy. Because when you're doing these practices, you're clearing the nadis the light energy channels within your body that you've messed up with your emotional preoccupation. And there are <clears throat> 84,000 channels. And how they are purified is with what they call the winds or prana, which is the byproduct of doing these practices. And one of my teachers, Namkai Norbu, taught me the nine yantra breathing technique, taught us in retreat. And it's a very simple but powerful practice using the motion of your body together with your breath and visualizing light. pervading your physical form. And I'll demonstrate how it works. Then I'll explain how to do it. When I raise my right hand, I'm inhaling, two fingers closing this nostril. I'm visualizing light filling up my body right to my nose. Then when I put my hand back down on my knee, all the light drains out and I have empty body, body avoidance. Again, inhale, hold your breath, close the right nostril. Exhale, bring the hand down all the light disappears downward. One more time, three times. Inhale, close the nostril, light fills up in your body to your nose. Bring the hand down, it all drains. Body of void, space, body of space. Then you do the left side, inhale, Bring your left hand up. Now, men start with the right hand to the nostril. Women start the practice with their left hand. That way, if you're facing in each other, you'd be in sync. So inhale, these two fingers. Close the nostril, hold your breath. Fill with light. Exhale, light drains out. Again, inhale, fill with light. Exhale, body of speed. One more time, inhale, exhale. Now that makes six breaths, so we have three more to go. Inhale, as you fill with light, then exhale, lean forward, all the light drains out. Inhale, 
Fill with life. Exhale. Fill with space. Inhale. Fill with light. Exhale. When you come up, be present. No visualization, just be present. Breathe normally. You can only find this timeless awareness in the present. Infinite okayness is a result of this practice. Now what you're doing is you're using the prana of your breath to open all the nadis in your body. Inhale, hold, exhale. Then you can go to the opposite hand if you want. Inhale, hold, Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Relax. You can do this as many times in, in any time you have some space to sit in a chair or on a cushion. At the beach. The simplicity of this practice brings the void nature of space and the powerful prana energy of light into your physical situation. And the effect is not only more energy, but more awareness. Not drama awareness. 
intelligent awareness, not stupid awareness like animals and humans, bodhisattva awareness. And remember, everything that you are doing in Tantra, everybody in the universe is doing exactly the same thing you are. We all together move to these, evolve into these higher states of intelligent awareness. where everything is simply okay. That's way too simple, too close, too profound, too precious. And too intelligent. Nadiato Vikanji Vikanji Mama Vikanji Raja Samandate Sova Nadiato Vikanji Vikanji Mama Vikanji Raja Samandate Sova Radhyata Om Vikanji Vikanji Maha Vikanji Raja Samandate Soha
The eight spoked wheel has a center. That's the space and light energy of the universe, all pervasive. Then it has three lines coming out from it. That's the body, speech, and mind of the human developing, evolving. Then that hub connects to the eight aspects of healing. Then the rim is its all pervasive nature applied to infinite sentient beings. So this is an infinite healing symbol, the eight spoke wheel of the Dharma. But when you do it with the medicine Buddha, this one is attachment. Oh, Mami Dabba Dewa Hri, Mami Dabba Dewa Hri, Mami Dabba Dewa Hri. And this one is aversion, ignorance, pride, jealousy. Then you have the outer, the spirits causing problems. And people practicing religions with wrong view causing problems. And all the sentient beings causing you problems. But this first one, it's Om Amitabha Deva Hri, makes this all the Buddha of infinite light, which is discerning that your higher intelligent awareness is infinitely more valuable than your drama stupid awareness. Then each of these spokes are the five Dhyana Buddhas. Amitabha is the first one. Then Om Rana Zimbabwe Long Chong. Om Rana Zimbabwe Long Chong. Om Rana Zimbabwe Long Chong. Om Vaira Khan and Deva Om. Om Vaira Khan Deva Om. Om Vaira Khan and Deva Om. Om Amiga Siddhi Deva Om. Om Amiga Siddhi Deva Om. Om Amiga Siddhi Deva Om. Om Atra Vaira Deva Om. Om Atra Vaira Deva Om. Om Atra Vaira Deva Om. Om Vaira Kana Deva Om. Om Vaira Kana Deva Om. Om Vaira Kana Deva Om. Then, the Thousand Arm Chagrazi. Omani Dehi Hum, Omani Dehi Hum, Omani Dehi Hum, Omani Dehi Hum, Omani Dehi Hum. Then the Raffle Manjushri, Omara Pasa Nadi Sama, Omara Pasa Nadi Sama, Omara Pasa Nadi Sama. Then the Raffle Vajrapani, Om Vajrapani Om Te, Om Vajrapani Om Te. And all of it together, Rajada Om Bhikanti Bhikanti Mahati Rajya Samagati Saha Rajada Om Bhikanti Bhikanti Mahati Rajya Samagati Saha Ajato <laughs> Oh, Namo Bhagavati Vaishaji Guru Vaidhuri, O Brahma Raja Daya, Dada Gada Hoka, Samaya Zamburi, O Daya Dhamma Vikanti Vikanti Maha Vikanti, Vaishya Zamagati Suha, O Namo Bhagavati Vaishaji Guru Vaidhuri, 
And we dedicate the virtue of this practice session tonight to all sentient beings, our mothers. This dedication goes like this. Applied to infinite sensitive ways. In practicing in this way, by the power of these virtuous actions, and by the love and kindness of my parents to me, and the teachings of Bodhicitta by my Lama, and my commitment of Samaya to all my Vajra sisters and brothers, and all the connection between myself and all men and women, all possessions, even those of beasts and burden from which I take milk and yogurt to drink, and those animals whose flesh and blood I eat. To all of these beings, without leaving one behind, may they quickly reach the sublime and perfect state of Buddhahood. May this virtue having realized Maha Mudra may quickly establish all beings without a single exception left out in this state. By the blessing of the truth of the Dharma being unchanging, by the blessing of the wishes of the Sangha being unwavering, and by the blessing of the activity of all of us for the benefit of everyone else being accomplished. May this and all dedication bears be fulfilled. May all beings be happy and have the cause of happiness, be away from suffering and the cause of suffering, be established in bliss through our practice and the highest states of equanimity. Completely relieved of all attachment, aversion, pride, jealousy, stupidity, bewilderment, and ignorance. Mahalo, thank you very much for a lovely session. Richie J, Aloha, and Tashi Delay. <laughs>